All right, so we'll, we'll kick it off. Thank you guys for just looking at that and the people that did offer uh, some feedback. Uh, very good, very good. I, I see it and it's spot on. So some people say formatted is off. The objective statement don't, don't get across the message. Uh, repeated sentences, gram grammatical errors. So that's, that's what I'm talking about. Y'all already thinking like a resume editor. So let's let's go through it and see. Uh, let's just learn some things and see what we can gain, and then we'll follow up after we go through uh, the common mistakes and all of that to see what actually we can improve and see even that, validate some of y'all, you guys feedback. Uh, let me get back to the PowerPoint. Yeah. All right. All right, so some of the common mistakes that I see. Uh, first is listing responsibilities instead of achievements. That is a powerful one because when we're talking about conveying content and conveying your experience, this is crucial. But I'm going to hold that until we go down to creating or crafting our bullet points because that kind of speaks to that. But just remember that listing and responsibilities instead of achieving. But I'm a, later on, I'm going to show you how we can form it in that achievement statement. So the second one is objective summaries is too general and wordy. And I see this a lot, especially with my engineering and computer science students. Uh, they it's, it's just too wordy or it's too too general. And then sometimes it's even just they don't have no substance because I, I normally see students come in and say I'm looking I'm seeking employment in X, Y and Z. If you apply for a company, they already know that you're seeking employment. So this when you do a summary and objective statement, it should be your attention getter. It should highlight some of those skills. It should it should pop. It should set the tone for your resume. And sometimes I don't see that. The third one is too short or too long. Now for the too long, if you two pages, I mean, you can probably get away with that if you've been in the industry for 30 years. I get it, 30 years, you have tons of experience, two pages, three pages, yes, my resume is two pages. I've seen some other people's resume that have been three pages, but they've been in the industry for 30 years. Now too short, I know we can pull out some experiences that you have um, in your history that can stretch it one page. I feel like everybody that graduate from undergrad or as a grad student should have at least one page. So that's that happy medium. It kind of remind me of uh, Goldilocks. Is it too hot where she ate the porridge? Is it too hot or is it too cold? You just got to get right in the middle. And I feel like that one page is right in the middle. And another one is using personal pronouns and articles. So in sometimes in cover letters, or even in, no, in uh, resumes, I see I, you're using the word I. So you have to replace that with action verbs, manage, develop, create it. So instead of writing in I tense, you got to write it in strong action verbs. Uh, so that's, that's a common mistake that I see. And then the third one is minimizing the opportunity to demonstrate transferable skills. So this is for the people that come in with two short resumes. They'll be like, ah, I don't know what I what I can do. Can I put my pizza experience? Yes, you can. I had one student that uh, delivered pieces and we formulated his bullet points to where it was very attractive. I mean, it highlighted some of his skills and what he done. I mean, he really did a good job being a piece of delivery and it highlighted like communication, uh, organization, um, coordinating and after we got done, he ended up getting an internship off of that, off of that experience. And that was the only experience that he had, in addition to his academic experience as well. But we was able to stretch his resume to one page. So minimizing the opportunities to demonstrate transferable skills if you don't have a lot of a lot of experience. So that's some common mistakes that I normally see. Now, making your resume relevant. So we went from common mistakes to making your resume relevant. How can we make our resume stand out? Evaluating the job description. I see a lot of students, they do shotgun. Uh, uh, they, they 
do shotgun applying. So it's like they apply to a hundred companies, but I'll be like, did you evaluate the job description? Uh, Cause that's important. You know, that is just like getting a test before that's just like getting the answers before you get in the test. So evaluate the job description, look at the skills, look at the responsibilities, see how they match up to your experiences. And here's a good one, identifying keywords. So I'm going to show you something real quick. I, I tell, uh, I show my students all that, whoever meet with me, let me show you something real quick. All right. Bethany, let me know if you can see my screen. Yes, I can see it. All right. All right. So it's a, it's a tool called Word Cloud. So what I have up here, I have a job description. I just typed in Indeed and found a job, a random job description. So I look at the job description, I, I point out what's most important. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna copy, maybe to qualifications. I don't wanna get that. Let me see, right there. I'm gonna copy this. And then I'm gonna go to Google and I'm gonna put in Word Cloud. And then I, I like to go to Jason Davis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste it in here and see what words come up for me. Automation, scenario, testing, environment, development, readiness. And now I'm going to see how I'm going to incorporate that into my resume as my action verbs or sentences or phrases. So now you are preparing for that third bullet point, which I'm going to go back to. Is optimizing for application tracking systems, because now more than ever, virtually, if we think about we're going virtually and with everything going on, employ employers are increasing and in using application tracking systems. Before, when I looked about a year ago, it was about 50% of companies were using application tracking system, but I can almost guarantee that has increased significantly, significantly due to the, 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 the landscape of today. So that's how you can optimize it. That's just one skill. And then also you can look at ONET. ONET have job experience or job descriptions, uh, salary, uh, salary.com glass door so there's three th three resources that you can use to help formulate your bullet points or come up with keywords related to the jobs so you have to optimize your application tracking system that's how you can make your resume stand out are you with me how am i doing bethany So all sorry, right. doing great, doing great. All right, all right, cool, cool. So now when we talk, that was the content. Now we have to think about aesthetically. How do it should how should it look appealing? Because the people look at, they judge off of how people look. And also they judge how off of how a resume should look too. So it's important to have that format, formatting codes or formatting rules to help your stuff look good. Uh, so here's some formatting. You don't use templates when we talk about optimizing application tracking systems. So those blue lines, those blue colors, those blue dots, all these fancy things, I say keep it standard. So if you're applying online, white and black on Word document, in PDF form, and then send it. But if you want to be creative, you do want to be creative, I say bring that into the interview. But applying online, keep it basic, keep it simple. Then use 0.5 to one inch margin. So that pretty much keeps it clean on the outside borders. And then also font is a big thing. I just seen people come in with 16 font. I'm like, what can we do with this? And I seen people to come in with nine font because they're trying to fit in everything. All you need is 10.5 to 12 with general, the general content, content and except for your name. So your name should be big and bold. And usually I use 14 to 16 font with your name. And then the third one is list most important information from the left to the right. Because if you think about it, how do we read? How do we read books? From left 
to write. So your education, you, your your degree is important. Then it goes out to the date that you graduate. If you go under your work experience, your 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 position is. ये देखो प्लीज ये सुनो मीटिंग हो रही है मेरी ऐसे में राइटिंग Your position is important. Listen, no, very good. Umar, it's resume writing. Khali sunte jao. You don't have to do anything. Formatting, points, ye sab tumko. No. Who are you speaking? Can you please write uh, down? I'm trying to hear the the lecture. Hey, uh, I'm sorry. Somebody has their. If y'all can mute mute it, please. That'll be very helpful. So thank you. So we read from left to right. That's how we read naturally. So under work experience, you you have your uh, employment, your position, your your title, and then on the back you got the dates. So formatted it in that way from left to right. What is most important on the left, and what's the least important on the right? In bullet points, people don't want to read paragraphs. It's easier to digest when you have bullet points and formatted in in those action and result statements. And then ensuring your layout sequence is relevant. So there's tons of ways they have combination resumes. They, I mean, it's it's so many formats of resumes. But usually, what I see with students that's graduate is chronological uh, resumes. So that's keeping your resume from uh, most important to to least important from the top to the bottom. So just finding out what layout would would best portray your experience and skills. So formatting is key. All right. So this is this is the one that I really really like. This is the one that's crucial when we're talking about content, content and articulating your skills and your experiences. All right. So we call it the SOAR method. S statement of action, occurrence, amount, and result. So when you're thinking about your content what you've done on the job, if it's customer service, leadership, how can I build it out in the SOAR method? So SOAR, that means statement of action. That means using your action verb. So manage, lead, operate it, implement it, create it. So those strong action verbs that you can start the sentence off. Occurrences, how often the action occurs. So daily, weekly, monthly. Uh, the A amount, how much, how many, 20 percent, uh, 550 times, 100 million, and then the results. That's key. I call it the big R. After you did all of that, what was the results of, of what you did? So if you put that all together, you can create the sword. But if you want to keep it simple, you can just do an action and results statement, starting with a strong action verb and ending off with the results. So the next slide, I'm going to show you some bullet points and I want you to read them and see what is the S, see what is the O, see what is the A, and see what, what is the R. All right, so now we have these sentences. Manage a technical crew of over 20 people on a daily basis that increase production three quarters in a row. It's supposed to say in a row. Accurately process 2 million in wire transfer in two minutes or less, resulting in reduced customer wait time and increased productivity. So just real quick, somebody can shout out, y'all can unmute. What is the S on the first bullet point? Do we have any brave soldiers? What is the S? in the first bullet point if we're talking yeah. about Kartika put in the note she said managed so managed that. powerful action verb managed a technical crew now what is the o uh, on a daily basis on a daily basis yes now what is the a Anybody, what is the A? So we got manage the technical crew 
on a daily basis, the A is a crew of 20 people. We've got several men typing in. So thank you for that answer. Yes, 20 people. And then we end off with the powerful result. After I managed a technical crew of over 20 people on a daily basis, I was able to increase productivity three quarters in a row. Powerful, powerful. It speak volumes versus saying manage the team of 20. They expanded that. So we're at, with the second one, accurately process. That's the that's the S. Two million in wire transfer. That's the amount. Two minutes, occurrence, or less. That's the O. Resulting in reduced customer wait time and increased productivity. That's the R. These are so crucial. These are so crucial whenever you are developing your bullet points or your content under your work experience. If you want to build out your volunteer experience, whatever you want to articulate more in detail on your resume, this is a way. Even on your cover letter, if you want to expand on your cover letter, this is a framework that you can use to help you to increase that attraction from employers because that's what they're looking for. All right. All right, so now we're going back to this resume. This was the first resume when I gave you the pretest because we went through uh, common mistakes. We went through how to formulate a SOAR. We went through uh, how to make your resume relevant. So we kind of got a little bit of content that we're working with. So these are some of the critiques that uh, we've noticed. So you can kind of look at it and see what stuck out to you. For objective statement. It says headings should be bold. Okay, yep. Underline to make them stand out. Yes. Use plain text. You see how the heading was different than the body, but it was kind of hard to read, so making it easier for the recruiter to read. Do not use I. That's the personal pronoun, so you can't use I in your resume. That's a common mistake. Uh, if you have experience, use a summary. Focus on what you can offer. Yes. Instead of telling them, hey, I'm looking for a communication director. I want to focus more on my skills. Uh, and then make this section streamlined. So for the education, when I talk about less, least important or most important to the left and then uh, least important to the right, this is a way that you can format that education, kind of spread it out because that's difficult to read for me. Uh, experiences, I think, uh, is that misspelled? Yep, experience miss. So making sure that you get somebody to look over it from grammatical errors. So these are some of the things. And even the spacing, it was off. It wasn't uh, the full page. It was too short. So these are some of the things that you can you can kind of think of whenever you're developing your resume. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna give you another example. We're going to critique it. And then we're going to look at the feedback and the finished product. But this is going to, I'm going to show you the finished product before we get to that of this resume. So now if we look at this resume, look how clean it is. They changed the, the, the summary and made it more direct uh, and focused on their skills. They changed the heading to make it more clean to read. You see how they got the bullet points and the SOAR method. It's just so much easier to read than what we've seen on the first one. Now let's 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 challenge ourselves and and assess this resume. So I'm gonna give you a few minutes to just point out some things that you you might see is wrong with this this resume. I already see a few of them, and you can type it in the chat. Thank you. So we have a few people chiming in. So it uh, looks like they used a template. Definitely yes. agree with that. Yes. Uh, too much white space. Yep. Um, let's see. The heading does not stand out. Same size as text. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Education at the bottom. So yeah, you guys are definitely putting out all the right stuff. Man, we need to hire them as career ambassadors, something like that. Right? <laughs> I know. Career That's ambassadors in training. Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Any, anything else? Oh. They pointed out, too, I think that 
there's the mixture of the bullet points and paragraphs. So there's a lack of consistency. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right, that's good. All right, let's move on to see what were some of the feedback that we have identified. So we start with the objective statement. No objective statement needed. Um, summary or profile would be better. Oh, better to use. OK, I like her name. I need a job. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. Oh, they pointed out uh, the email. So making sure that your email is very professional because she got on here super chick at 89 at Hotmail. So people pick up on that. People pick up on that. Uh, so they got it in paragraph form, making it bullet bullet point to make it easier to read. Um, ensuring that as font or black ink and you are not using template. Yep, somebody said template. So that's good. Good catch. Moving dates to the right so that left to right balancing the resume out. Uh, summary. I think what was misspelled. This person should use objective rather than a summary. OK because they do not have much relevant experience. Yep. Identify three skills. All right, so let's go to the clean version. Oh, sorry. So here's the clean version. So much better, so much better. The job at the top, she changed her email. Education is clean, it's balanced. The dates are all, to the, all the way to the right. Uh, degrees to the left. I mean, relevant courses, and then assisted with the implementation of current Microsoft Access database. Prepare to follow through with end of the year inventory audits of 100 plus supplies. So, I mean, forming it in the action and result statements. Uh, leadership activities, very clean. I mean, you can see the stark difference between the original version and the critique and modified and morphed version that I Need a Job has created. So these are some of the things that you can think about whenever you are constructing your resume. All right. Move on. All right, so now let's move to cover letter. Cover letter, cover letter, cover letter. A lot of times I get students that come in and say, should I write a cover letter? I say, without a doubt, yes, you should write a cover letter. Even if the job does not require you to write a cover letter. The reason why I say that is one, because you practice for your interview. Whenever you write your cover letter, it's it kind of details key experience in, within your resume. So now you kind of writing it down and processing what, what what can I say in my interview? And then how can I expound on my experience? How do I look at my experience? So the cover letter is just an extension of your resume. And you have to identify those key skills that's based on the job description of how you can expound on in your cover letter. And then it's a selling point. It's a it's additional it's an additional uh, a document that you can sell yourself. It's a selling point. So getting personal, not too personal, but personal. I had this kid or this student that came in. I don't I mean to say kid, but the student that came in, he was a biomedical engineer and I really loved his cover letter. I felt like his cover letter was the one that got him the job. And the reason why, because he made it personal to the point where it was relevant to the job and just and it reflected his passion for wanting to get into the the internship that he was pursuing. And his his case was that he went to the hospital and he actually was about to 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 pass away. He was dealing with some medical issues and one of the machines that they use in biomedical world, they used to save his life. And he talked about that in his cover letter how this machine helped him to save his life and he became so dependent on wanting to study this machine so much that he decided to get his degree in biomedical. And because of that, 
he ended up wanting to work for the company that produced this machine. Yes, that's what was very particular to him, but he made it personal and relevant to the situation. And then he talked about all the skills that he gained along the way and how he can be an effective intern if he was given that opportunity. So the cover letter is it's a way to tell your story a little bit, to write the book in a little bit more in detail of your experiences. Uh, so this is how we're going to frame it, though. We're going to think about the Borney method. This is a method that I learned from one of the technical recruiters that I encountered. Uh, he was like, man, this Borney method, this is a framework that I usually tell my students. So I was like, man, I want to share this to my students or the students that I encounter. And if we know the song of the Borney method, I don't know if y'all was exposed to this. It's kind of old school. Bethany, do you know this song? You know I know this song. Oh, it's been man. in my head for a year. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for that, Eric. Yes. <laughs> it's I love you. You love me. We're a happy family. I love that song. But on top of just making sure that you got your dates, you got your headings clean on your cover letter, you are addressing uh the person, if you can get a specific name, make sure that you address that person, dear, you know, John Doe, whoever that name is. And if not, the hiring committee, make sure that you have the company's address on there. After doing those simple tasks, which you can Google that and get that information. This is a framework that you need to, to, to kind of think of whenever you are developing the content in your resume. The first paragraph should be, I love you. Why do I love the company? Why am I drawn to the company? Just like my man, he was drawn to the company because that device saved his life. So what, 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 how did I draw an affection to your company? What, what did I find that, that just attracted me to you? If you can illustrate that on top of doing general, like, you know, your education, your skills, but also putting that element in there of how I can make this connection from my experience and why my experience is attracted to this company and how I can benefit this company. I think that first paragraph will be very powerful. You love me. This is the second thing. You love me now. Why should they love you? Why, why, why should they like you? Like what, how can you fulfill the requirements? What key skills did you have that they would love to invest in? What makes you unique? What makes you stand out? And of course you want to put it in maybe bullet points or, you know, format it in a way where it's easy to, 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 to pull out your skills or your experiences. But this is a point where you can sell yourself. The second or the next two or three, or if you want to do one paragraph, that's the you love me. And then the last paragraph is we are a happy family. So how can I make the connection? That means that after I make my summary statement, should I put, you know, my email, how you can get in contact with me or my phone number? How can we keep in contact with each other? So if you keep this format, whenever you formatting or creating your cover letter, I feel like it'll be impactful. It'll tell your story. It'll be able to set you apart because first of all, you are creating a cover letter because a lot of some students don't create cover letters, but you're creating a cover letter and you are making it more personalized and making it more relevant to the job. And I feel like this format will help you construct that. So with that being said, do we have any questions or concerns? All right, I'm taking a look at the chat. Nothing's coming in yet, but I know sometimes there's a delay. So okay. we will just kind of keep it open. And I agree with Eric. Yeah. If you can't explain why you're a good fit, how are they going to see it? Man. Um, so again, sometimes this takes coming and talk to us at the Career Center, yeah. talking it out with a friend. Again, make it so easy for them between yeah. your cover letter and your resume to see what a good fit you are. If they have to search and really look into, wait, you know, how does this apply? Yeah. You're probably not going to pick you. 
Yes. So again, yes. it's about making it easy. If you're going through a hundred or a thousand resumes yes. and you run over somebody that, that just A, B, and C lines it out, yes. perfect. So yes. think of it on the side of who has to read all of these. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, so we've got that. some questions coming okay. in. All right. All right, I've been reading. This is, um, let's see, Mr. Devonish. Mm -hmm. I've been reading conflicting advice about cover letters being a few sentences versus a few paragraphs. What is your recommendation? I say, I say make it relevant to the job. So that could be whatever that you produce. Because, I, I, I mean, people can get in the, the, the kind of in the, what, how long should it be? How, how much should it be? Of course, you want to make it one page, but but you want to make sure that you are highlighting the key skills. And that could be short or it could be long. But I feel like if you do this format, the I love you, maybe with the I love you two or, two or three sentences for the introduction, uh, the you love me, maybe uh, a paragraph or I've seen people that write two paragraphs depending on the, the amount of skills that relates to the job. Uh, and then the last paragraph, which is maybe two or three sentences. So I, I feel like whatever you feel comfortable with, with, and you're able to articulate what is relevant to that job, that's the most important versus the length. I mean, what's your take on that, uh, Beth? Absolutely, Eric. We're on the same page with that. Um, quality yes. over quantity. More words does not equal better. Yes. <laughs> I yes. think we've all read somebody's um, paper or even somebody's text or email, mm -hmm. and you're having to wade through paragraph after paragraph to figure out the point of it or <laughs> what's really relevant. Don't do yeah. that to people. <laughs> if you are wanting that job, make it clear. Yeah. Um, yes. So again, you may have a full page worth of Relevant information, fantastic. If you don't, that's okay. Don't make stuff up or drag yeah. it out. You're going to lose them. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. That's good. I like that. That's good. So those were our main questions so far. It was about the length. Okay. Um, and there was a question earlier. Someone put um, having education after experience. Mm -hmm. So I think we have seen some examples where, where that is relevant. Uh, mm -hmm. Eric, what do you think? All right, having uh, education after experiences. Mm -hmm. I, my my take on this is if you graduated from college, undergrad or graduate, I feel like your education should be at the top because this is kind of like your summary statement. If you don't have a summary, they want to know what is your degree, what is your technical skills, or what is your skills, and how did you apply that? Versus somebody that been in the industry for 30 years and they are leading with their experiences. That's when that that professional summary come in and they put all the highlight highlighted skills or things that they accomplish in that field. They'll put that and then they'll put their work experience and then their education at the bottom. But for people that are graduating, I feel like it's very important to put your education at the top because that's something that you're currently in, that they're looking for the, the certain degree. And I feel like that's, that's, that's important information for students that our graduating should, it should be at the top. That's my take on it. Do you have anything? No, definitely. I think, again, you and I have the same thoughts yeah. and feelings and experiences from that. Mm -hmm. um, you're graduating from UTD. You're mm -hmm. getting a great degree from a great institution that's well known. Mm -hmm. um, you want them to know, hey, I have the most recent education, the most up and coming um, information in this field. So you're really highlighting that at the top. Employers really are looking for that because they want that fresh blood in their company that can bring in the new ideas and um, again all the up and coming information coming out within your field. So I would say if you've recently graduated, I can't imagine a circumstance where that education wouldn't be top and bolded, you know, at the top of your resume. So I'm with Eric. Yeah, because you want to give them a snapshot, a snapshot before they get into the work experience. Exactly, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So is there any other questions? All right. Let's see. I don't have I don't have any more. All right, cool. Looks like we've answered them all. All right, cool. So just to give you some general uh, information, 
I know Ms. Beth, uh, Ms. Bethany, she emphasizes like coming in and meeting with somebody or consulting with somebody. Here are your consultants, so feel free to reach out to us. We are available virtually. Um, go through Handshake, set up an appointment, and you will be able to see our calendar and get on our calendar, and we could just meet virtually. It's so much easier now, I feel like. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, you could be in the comfort of your home and just be available <laughs> to meet uh, versus going and meeting in the office. So we are available, you know, for you here to talk about cover letters, resumes, or even career advice, whatever you need, we're here for you. So uh, here are your career consultants. Also, we have uh, our virtual office hours as well uh, from two to three. And these typically take 15 minutes. So if you're looking for more in debt, uh, type of consultant, I definitely suggest that you reach out to one of us individually. And then we have our resume, uh, the virtual resume lab, where you can uh, meet with a career ambassador that will look over your resume. Uh, so these are two uh, ways that you can connect with us as well. And then also I put in the chat my resources. So in addition to what I said, if you want to do your own research, you know, get your information for yourself. You can check out the chat. I put these resources in there and, and, and then explore for yourself. They, they, this can provide you uh, answers on resume, cover letter. In addition to that, job search strategies, uh, networking. So these are great resources that I've used to, to kind of construct or these uh, construct this, this uh, PowerPoint. And with that being said, thank you guys for coming. I hope you are able to, to take something away that can help you clean up your ticket. <laughs> that can help you with your ticket to employment because your resume is your ticket. So thank you. I appreciate you. Uh, until next time, be safe. Bye. Y'all have a good one.